On today's show, Jaguar and Waymo team up to produce an all-electric, fully autonomous Jaguar I-PACE, which we will see tested on roads around the world very soon. The production version of the Kona EV launches in New York, and Tesla urges its staff to prove naysayers wrong as Tesla stocks takes a tumble. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and my job is to pick the best clean transportation and energy news stories so you don't have to. Thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show with news of a voluntary recall involving some 123,000 Tesla Model S electric cars. Announced Thursday, the voluntary recall is to address potential excessive corrosion in the bolts used to hold the power steering unit together which, if they fail, could result in a loss or reduction of steering power assistance. Tesla says it will be offering customers of affected cars a retrofit replacement of the Bosch manufactured unit. While Tesla says no injuries or crashes have been reported in connection with this problem, it is recalling all cars that have the problem as a precaution. Replacement parts will of course be provided under warranty and Tesla will reach out to affected customers when parts are available for their car. It may have only been a few weeks ago that Jaguar Land Rover unveiled the production version of its 2019 Jaguar I-PACE electric car. But at this week's New York Auto Show, the automaker surprised us with the news that it had been working with Waymo on designing and building a fully autonomous version of the I-PACE SUV. Waymo says it will begin to add the I-PACE SUV to its fleet of autonomous vehicles in the coming months, with a wider plan of adding more than 20,000 autonomous I-PACE vehicles to the Waymo fleet by decade's end. Rather than be a replacement for the Level 5 capable Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans already on Waymo's fleet, the company says the I-PACE will add a premium SUV feel to its service for those who want to ride in a car, not a minivan. Bollinger, the East Coast automaker seeking to bring its B1 on off-road utility truck to market, has announced this week that it secured a production partnership to help it bring its first vehicle to market. Working alongside Optimal Inc. of Plymouth, Michigan, Bollinger says it should be ready to finalize the design work for the B1 by the end of this year, aiming to begin production by the end of next. As noted in last week's show, there's no news on price yet, but of course, you'll hear here as soon as one is announced. Back at the start of the year, Hyundai unveiled the Kona EV. This week at the New York Auto Show, we finally got to see the production version of the same, along with some rather impressive specifications that could really ignite the segment. For a start, the production Kona EV, called the Kona Electric, is said to have an estimated 250 mile, 400 kilometer EPA cycle range, more than the Chevrolet Bolt, thanks to a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack and 117 MPGE fuel efficiency. We should note that the figure is still just estimated, but with a 150 kilowatt electric motor, 100 kilowatt CCS quick charging as standard and liquid cooling system to keep that big battery pack happy, the Kona Electric is most certainly a car I can't wait to drive. Although Hyundai was busy promoting its Kona Electric in New York back in Korea, Hat Bu Yong, Hyundai's union chief, was sounding alarm over electric cars, stating that electric cars are disasters and that they are evil. We are very nervous. No, this isn't a remake of Christine. The union head is referring to the number of staff that he fears may lose their jobs as Hyundai transitions to electric drivetrains. With EVs being far less complex than an internal combustion engine, the fear among workers is that I will no longer need to be employed if the primary output from Hyundai's factories is electric. While he's correct that less employees will be needed on drivetrain power units, it's worth noting that some other automakers, like BMW, have started to transition their staff to battery production instead. It isn't clear if Hyundai is planning this or not. SF Motors, the US branch of Chinese car company Socon, has just unveiled two new premium SUVs at its headquarters in Santa Clara, California. The two vehicles, the medium-sized SF5 and the full-sized SF7, are claimed to have a 0-60 mph 
0 to 96 kph sprint time of under three seconds, a 1,000 horsepower drivetrain and proprietary battery pack that will offer upwards of 300 miles, 500 kilometers of range per charge. There's also LiDAR built in for adverse weather conditions, as well as a plan to offer a range extender of sorts to provide longer distance capabilities. On the battery front though, it's worth noting that last year, SF Motors acquired in Evit, a battery company founded by Tesla co-founder Martin Eberhard for $33 million. SF Motors says it plans to bring both cars to market by the end of 2019 and, in a moment of poetic justice, plans to build those vehicles at a former Indiana GM production facility where Hummers were made. Coming hot on the heels of Rapidgate last week, something Nissan has announced it's examining in depth with its engineers and some of the affected vehicles, the company has unveiled a new battery purchase scheme for owners of EVs in Japan, replacement battery packs made from refabricated rather than new battery modules. At about half the price of a brand new replacement pack, these refabricated packs will initially be offered to Japanese customers in 24 kilowatt hour capacities, but Nissan has plans to expand its offerings to include 30 kilowatt hour and 40 kilowatt hour models in the future. Sadly, it appears there's no upgrade option, so you can only put a battery pack in that matches the original capacity of your car's battery pack when new, but for the equivalent price of two and a half thousand US dollars, it could certainly lower the entry point for electric car ownership. It's not known if this scheme will be available outside of Japan, but given a recent report from New Zealand suggesting 30 kilowatt hour leaf battery packs are losing their capacity faster than the 24 kilowatt hour leaf battery packs, it does seem likely that Nissan will provide these remanufactured battery replacement options for its customers worldwide. Prove the haters wrong. That's the message from Tesla to staff this week, as Tesla stock was downgraded by Moody's Investor Service over concerns of cash liquidity and production volume. Moody's cut Tesla's regular stock rating to B3 on Tuesday, six levels below investment grade, while it cut Tesla's senior unsecured notes to CAA1, seven steps below B3. This, in turn, led to Tesla shares closing at their lowest price in more than a year. According to Bloomberg, a pair of internal memos from the heads of engineering and production were circulated last week imploring staff to prove a bunch of haters wrong. Telling staff that they could exceed 300 Model 3 cars in a day, the two execs said it would be an incredible victory over those who were doubting the company's ability to make good on its goals of bringing electric vehicles to everyone. With a planned shutdown occurring today to implement further production line tweaks, Tesla hopes to achieve that 300 cars per day soon, which would put it just shy of a target 2,500 cars per week it's been aiming for, and it would be significantly higher than the guesstimated 1,400 plus cars per week Tesla is believed to be producing right now. For some time, BMW and Daimler have each operated their own urban mobility services in major cities across the world. Drive Now and its various subsidiaries for BMW and Car2Go for Daimler. Often in large cities, the two car sharing schemes and associated electric car charging and mobility programs operated in direct competition with one another, as is the case here in Portland, Oregon, where we're based. But this week, the two companies have announced a merger of those services. The new company, which each automaker will own 50% of, will combine multimodal and on-demand mobility with car sharing, ride hailing, parking and charging services, and should make urban and suburban travel a complete breeze, even if you don't own a car of your own. Talking of mergers, it's been reported this week that Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi are in the process of discussing a massive merger which could see them become not only alliance partners, but one massive car company. Renault and Nissan have been alliance partners for nearly 20 years, with Mitsubishi joining the fun in 2016. But a full merger would enable the resulting publicly traded company to pull resources, develop new models, and compete against the likes of Toyota and Volkswagen far more effectively than each individual member company can do today. At the moment, things appear to be in the early days and no official confirmation of talks has been given. But if this rumor is true, it could mean some very interesting things for the world of electric and autonomous vehicles. 
And finally, with more and more plug-in cars on the roads of the world today, demand for electric car charging stations is on the rise, both in terms of existing and new charging infrastructure. And with that rise in demand, there's a battle brewing between owners of plug-in hybrids, long-distance EVs and short-range EVs over who gets priority at public charging stations. Etiquette dictates that you should only charge when you really need to, but now the city of Beverly Hills has stepped into the fray, enacting new ordinance as of April 2nd, which will make it illegal for plug-in hybrids to use the city's public charging infrastructure. Costs for public charging will also increase, with the argument from officials that they want to encourage EV rather than PHEV adoption. It's a controversial move, and you know what? Rather than state my opinion right here, I'm going to ask you to share yours in the comments below. That's it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And as always, don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kia kite. See you next time.